Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. First of all, if you're new here, I post new book reviews almost every single day on both fiction and nonfiction books. So if you're looking for some book recommendations or if you like following book reviews, then feel free to stick around. Today I am going to be reviewing Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher. This is quite a small book. It's not quite a full book length, I would say. It's a little over 100 pages, about 115 or so pages. And I picked this out of the library because the cover seemed interesting. I kind of had a suspicion it was going to be a fairy tale retelling of sorts. And I figured if I didn't like it or if it wasn't my cup of tea, it would be very short and I could either finish it or return it. So it wasn't going to be too much of a time commitment. I have not read anything by T. Kingfisher, but I do believe she's published several other books, including Nettle and Bone, What Moves the Dead, and A House with Good Bones. And I have heard of the Nettle and Bone book, but I just haven't read any of these. So this was my first one written by her. And as far as I can tell, it's completely standalone and you don't need to have read anything else by her to enjoy this book. So Thorn Hedge is a retelling. It's a retelling of the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale. In the original Sleeping Beauty, or in the Sleeping Beauty that many of us are familiar with, I should say, the princess is cursed to sleep until awoken by a prince by an evil fairy. In this retelling, though, it goes into something that I've, I've seen more and more in books recently, I feel like, in which the script is kind of flipped and the person who in the original story was perceived as evil or bad is in the modern retelling perceived as maybe the good guy and the story has been twisted throughout history. So in this retelling, the the fairy, the individual who puts the princess to sleep, is named Toadling. We have Toad here on the inside cover right here, and Toadling was attempting to help and kind of bungled the spell that she was going to do and accidentally kind of created a situation um, out of the princess. The princess was also an evil individual, so the this fairy was trying to contain a lot of the damage that the princess was going to be doing. However, things didn't go as planned and she had to put the princess, Toadling had to put the princess to sleep to avoid her from doing awful things. She was quite a cruel individual and was doing rather dark and disturbing things that were causing harm to people in the castle. So the to Toadling, the fairy from the original story, has put the princess into a sleep so that she doesn't cause any more harm while she tries to figure out what to do with the princess. She doesn't really have the heart to kill the princess, but at the same time she knows that if the princess ever were to awake, she would do horrible, horrible things in the world. Toadling has been watching the princess sleep for many, many years, and one day a prince comes along and is starting to sniff around the thorn hedge that she has built up around the old keep, and she starts to get disturbed because this prince could ruin the plans and might not believe that the ugly fairy, the toadling, um, or toadling, that's her name, toadling, might not be telling the truth, and he might be inspired to break the spell and thereby unleashing a lot of these or a lot of this woman who could be quite dangerous into the world. I really liked the retelling. I thought it was really well done. I enjoyed it. Um, I liked Toadling as a character. She was probably my favorite character in the whole book. And sometimes I feel like when, when I'm reading a retelling of a fairy tale, the, I mean, I feel like the most obvious thing to do is to flip who the good guy and who the bad guy is. So I feel like it has to be done really well for me to like it. Otherwise I feel like they're just, the author is just buying into a easy, quick, cheap cliche to get a book out. Like, what if the good guy was actually the bad guy? Whoa, but this was really well done and I really, really liked it. This would probably be a high four star, maybe even a five star read. And it is quite quick. So if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of time, maybe your career takes a lot of time, you have a lot of time intensive hobbies and you're trying to get back into reading, or maybe you have young kids, this could be a really good book because it's entertaining. It's really well written. I love the story, but it's just over a hundred pages. I personally read it um, in one evening while sitting in bed, like before I went to bed for the night. Um, but I might read a little quicker than average, so I think for, even for an average person it wouldn't take more than a, a day or two to read because of the, the shortness of it, but you still get a full story and it's still really well written, so I really, really recommend it. This also makes me wonder how her other books are. Um, I feel like 
when an author shows that they have the talent and ability to contain a whole interesting story in just over 100 pages, I want to see what their full length writing is. So I'm definitely interested in checking out what else T. Kingfisher has written because this one really piqued my interest and I am now intrigued. If you have read Thorn Hedge, if you have any thoughts or comments on the book, if you have anything similar to this that you would like to recommend, please let me know in the comments below. I love to receive them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.